<clears throat> Thursday, January the 6th, 2022. And our town of Bluffton affordable housing meeting is now in session. Have a roll call, please. Yes, let me switch my screen. So you all can see the agenda. Can you see the agenda? Yes. Well, okay. no, but no. I have mine, but no, not on the okay. screen. Hold on one second. <clears throat> okay, agenda is up and we are ready for roll call. Chairman Fred Hamilton. Present. Councilman Dan Wood. Here. John Nickel. Here. Gwen Chambers. Grace Staples. Here. Meg James. I'm here. And Denolis Polite. Okay. If, uh, before us, we have the agenda for today's meeting. Is there a motion to accept the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. And we also have uh, in your emails and possession the minutes for December 2nd, 2021. Can I get a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay. Do we have any public comments? No, sir. No public comments at this time. Okay. Then we'll turn it over to you for all and new business. All right. Good morning again and happy 2022. What you have before you Excuse me, um, just seeing if Gwen is getting on. She's logging in now. Gwen got track with the time, the time change. Um, what you have before you is our memo, our budget for the last month's spending. The adopted budget for 2022 was $190,000. As of December 30th, 2021, when this report was submitted, the available budget was $126,000, 139 excuse me, $126,139.16. $63,6084 has been paid out on roof repairs, septic pump outs, and income verification invoices. Again, as of December 30th, 12 homes have been assisted and four homes are currently in line to stop repairs and three are waiting on work estimates for services such as roof repairs, wet floor repairs, and door repairs. Uh, any questions on that layout? And again, that is as of December last year. Going down to our spreadsheet, our Excel spreadsheet, it's kind of a breakdown of those numbers that you saw. Two asterisks in our home repair line, the invoices that we send over to, um, the applications that we send over to LCOG, that comes out of that uh, line item there. So that's why two asterisks you can see that, that has um, a other, uh, debit, not just repairs, our invoices for LCOG. Um, that gives you guys a layout of what we closed out with last year, not the fiscal year, but year 2021. Any questions with that? All right. Mm, hearing no questions and seeing no hands raised, I am going to move us down to our proposed budget for the fiscal year of 2023. Um, we're just getting into the new year of 2022, but as you all know, uh, the town is working on their budget for the upcoming fiscal year. So nothing has changed. We're not asking for any um, parts to go bigger or parts to decrease in dollar amount. This is just exactly what we've been working with for the past couple of years. So we do need to take a vote on this. Um, if anyone wants to change anything or um, you know, take something off, add something, now is our time to discuss it before we send it over to finance and then it goes over to council. So any questions there? Um, I, I have a question, Victoria. Mm -hmm. um, because of all the, um, the inflation, 
uh, for materials and, and things like that. Is that comprehended in our budget, proposed budget? Well, last year we did see um, some inflation. We didn't, um, you know, prices did go up in all material when it comes to construction, but it did not mess with our budget. So no, ma'am, we don't have to change any dollar amounts when it comes to anything. We did see um, septic pump outs went out, like I told you guys a couple months ago in 2021, septic pump outs went up $100. But being that our budget and our pot is so large, you know, we didn't need to change anything. So I think where we are now, we're good with inflation. Um, okay. If any home repairs go over our allotted amount, then that's when I bring it to you guys and we talk it over and say, you know, yay or nay, or let's find another contractor or, you know, somebody that can provide a, a better invoice for us, an okay. estimate for us. So, no, right. I don't think we need to top anything that's already listed dollar amount wise. Okay, thank you. Uh, not pertaining to the budget, but pertaining to contract work. Mm -hmm. Do we have an, do we have enough contractors to to accommodate our needs? We, um, sometimes I hear you say we're waiting on estimates or we waiting on uh, the work to get started. Um, so as of, I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. No, I'm good. Go ahead. Yes, as of right now, we have two or three main contract contractors that we work with that jump on things right away. I'm always looking for new ones, like I keep saying, but right now we do have two or three. Um, so they are moving uh, over the holiday break. I actually had three roof projects that were completed. So I think what it was, COVID was kind of being a delay. Um, supplies coming in, you know, from across the waters or wherever they were coming in from. That was the holdup for quite a few of our um, contractors that do respond to work that I give to them. So I think right now we're good. Uh, like I said, three homes were, were done over the holiday between New Year's and Christmas. So they were working. I think it was just, you know, getting supplies in and the supply shortage was the most part of the hang up. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we do need to uh, take a vote on this, um, this budget just so we can move it along to the next process. Move to adopt. Second. Okay, there's a motion to adopt the budget as presented in the second. All in favor, let it know aye. by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Right. Ayes have it. Thank you. Now, the next thing that we have on our agenda, I'm going to skip back a few slides under discussion. Earlier in 2021, we did some, I had some little presenters come in to kind of give us some updates on what they were doing with their affordable housing. Um, we had some different presenters such as Charleston uh, Council, Committee Member Nickel brought in some suggestions that we reach out to different areas to see, you know, what they were working on, different ideas that they can give on their affordable housing project. We didn't do that towards the end of 2021 and we want to kind of get back into that. So under discussion, I just put, if you guys have any um, ideas of who you would want to see or what you would want to hear over the next couple months for 2022, any ideas that you have that I can reach out to kind of get them to our monthly meetings, that would be greatly appreciated. I did reach out to different agencies already, and I'm waiting for them to respond, but I would love to hear your ideas, you know, different things that you want to talk about pertaining to how we could, you know, up our chances of getting, you know, more affordable housing ideas and more topics that we probably can bring into town of Bluffton. So the floor is open for discussion. If anyone has anything off the top of their head, or you can always email me or call me, you know, if you don't have anything right now. Um, Victoria, I have a couple of contacts. Um, one being Community Works, and I know they have already visited here in the Low Country and began discussions in Beaufort, this um, city of Beaufort. Um, they are out of Spartanburg, Greenville area, but they cover the whole state of South Carolina. Okay, I um, missed the, the name of the group. Can you say it one more time? I'm sorry. Community Works. And Community what I'll do works. is I'll send you their contact information. And then the okay. other um, person to reach out to, the mayor of uh, Columbia, um, Richland County, she mm -hmm. has um, a really good affordable housing program that she's working on. And I'll send you her contact information as well. Okay. Um, just to start discussions and 
to see what she has going on and maybe she can talk about a couple of things. Okay, share that with me and I will definitely reach out. Okay. Okay, this is, this is I think, um, important for, to give our meeting uh, our meetings a little bit more, um, I guess, substance, as well as keep us um, aware of how we could be a better um, serving committee for our, for, our, for our community. It also um, is important to know when banks and um, builders or contractors are interested in in projects and, and um, how we may be able to um, collaborate with them when we have future projects for the town. So all this stuff, just all this wisdom just makes us, give us more tools for our box to, so that we can better serve. And um, I appreciate you guys sharing whatever um, contact or whatever interest you think might might lend itself to that so that we can um, get it on our agendas. Well, I'll mention again, Humanities Foundation. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, private nonprofit uh, that uh, I think is based in Charleston, but certainly has uh, housing projects in, in Charleston and has worked with with the town of Charleston on, on uh, affordable housing. Uh, they also have a property over in Savannah and then they've, they've got a number of locations throughout the Southeastern United States. Uh, what has struck me uh, that you can learn just from going to their website and that sort of thing are the, uh, the social service aspects uh, in these housing projects where they are, um, they are providing um, employment and job uh, counseling and they're, they're providing some medical uh, services. And, and uh, so it, it's, a, it's a lot more than just uh, collecting a rent check each month. Uh, and so I think it, it would be interesting to have one of the operational people, not not necessarily an executive or a, you know somebody who's uh, uh, just sits in an office someplace else, but somebody who's operating one of these uh, one of these complexes, uh, apartment, and they're they're rental units uh, uh, to get to, to learn more about what they're. Uh, we're up to up to in uh, in social service aspects and the other services provided to the to the residents because it looks like we're headed probably towards some rental units I think with uh, with uh, piece uh, with uh, the projects that we've got in negotiations. I think that's a great idea, just so that it's like full body, full circle, and we're actually moving towards helping the people that you know that this committee is for. So I I like that. I'll do some research and I can look up, look for some um, some organizations as well to help out. Yeah, we just want to get, you know, some different ideas, expand what we're doing, uh, not to say copycat, but to see if we can, you know, if our town is kind of on the same level as other communities around us so that we can kind of do the same thing to offer our residents more in 2022, just to get our, you know, kick off the year right and do a little bit more than what we're doing now. Not saying that we haven't been in full blast, because trust me, I have been, but just to kind of, you know, widen our umbrella and widen our box of different things that we can do for residents. One other thing that I'll throw out um, is not an affordable housing issue, uh, but homelessness. Uh, there's a, a uh, gentleman who is the uh, director of the Beaufort County, uh, I don't know, social services, I think is the, the name. And I uh, happened to run into him at a, at a meeting where he was giving a presentation on, on homelessness in, in the county. And uh, I thought he, uh, he had a lot to say about uh, 
the problem and and uh, and uh, it was a it was a very very interesting uh, presentation. So uh, it might that might be uh, it's it again it's not uh, it's not mm -hmm. dealing directly with housing, but it's dealing with the uh, the, the homeless challenge. Mr. Chairman, yes, I'd like to say that uh, based on some of the comments um, to, John, to John's point, <clears throat> once we do get into rentals or uh, even people that uh, are going to buy a home, you know, locally, we have two organizations here. <clears throat> Fred is on the board of the uh, Bluffton Self-Help, which does a lot of outreach to a lot of the things that we're, we're discussing right now. As far as uh, you know, help hopefully retaining some job skills and other and other means. Um, the other one is Volunteers of Medicine, which I sit on that board, Bluffton Jasper, and obviously that provides medical care for those that can't afford it and uh, who qualify. So I mean, some of these services are here now, um, and it's just a matter of you know when the time comes where if we want to have that discussion further we could explore a partnership with these people or either just route them to the to these bodies that already exist here locally it's a good point um excellent yeah good point then um, um victoria i don't know if you i uh, noticed but uh miss polite has joined us as well yes i got her down thank you thank you Thank you, um, Mr. Hamilton. Actually, um, and this is Denola. Um, one, since we are throwing out ideas, when we start to um, consider things that affordable housing um, could offer or direct people to other services, my concern has always been the ability to get them ready for home ownership. Um, and that's what credit. Um, and um, finances and budgeting and different things like that. So as we're talking about that, please put that on the list also because we can target um, people in our community, um, but sometimes we don't target the one that actually needs affordable housing. And when we don't do that, um, and, and sometimes we don't, we can't, or we target them, but they don't qualify because of lack of education in certain areas. So if we can consider um, having some type of initiative that um, deals directly with um, becoming qualified to be an applicant would be something I would be interested in. Yes, Ms. Polite, I did reach out to uh, Center for Heirs Property Preservation that's over in Charleston. Like I said, I just put out some different emails and did some voicemails for different agencies that do um, maybe first-time homebuyer programs. I don't know if it's something that we've done in the past, but I just want to put it out there that I did reach out to see you know, if we can do a workshop, if we can do a Zoom call, or if they're meeting in person. I know COVID numbers are back up, so that might be something that we can um, hold virtually, have a registration, and see how many people can sign up. Um, not saying that it's set in stone. I know I need to bring it to you. There's a protocol with everything, but I just put it out there for her first time home buyers class and some different um, workshops that the Ayers Park Preservation of Charleston holds. So I kind of did, you know, put some footwork in already. So that is something that I do have on the list. You know, like I said, I would bring it to you all and see if it's something that we can do. But I did go ahead and put out some different um, fields for some different uh, workshops. Okay, there is also another organization in it. I can't remember. Fred might remember because we used to deal with them. Um, it's South Carolina um, Minority Affairs or something like that. And they um, do a lot of the education piece for people um, to either get them in business or get them ready for home ownership, I think. And um, I do have information about that at home, so I'll send that to you. And I don't know if they'll work, but um, that organization reached out to different groups of people. They have different um, legs on under whatever program they're under that reach different people. So okay. I'll send that information to you, and it's really a good program. All right.
Anyone else, any more uh, suggestions, presentations, topics, discussions, or any other um, questions that you guys have about the program last year? I am all ears. Um, I have one question. Mm -hmm. um, with talking about all of um, the re revitalization um, in home, like making sure that home buyers are prepared and understanding um, how to purchase a home and what they need. Would it be, is, it might be something down the road, but could we offer home buyer assistance um, in our budget as well, or is that? So if they complete the classes and they do all the protocol, we, can we have a component of our budget that offers home buyers assistance? I'm gonna let our chairman answer that one and staff as well. I know we have uh, Charlotte on. Um, I'm not sure if home buyer assistance requires funding. Most, most, most organizations that offer home buyer assistance just requires um, the, uh, a potential applicant to show up and, and those usually are free. Um, are free. Now, um, if you know of something different, I'm not aware of that. Back in the day, um, home buyer assistance program would give a, um, and I don't know what it's actually called, but a, like a um, silent mortgage or something like that. And over years, it's, um, it's um, there's this second mortgage or something on it. Um, and then if you stay in the house a certain amount of time, then it's reduced or something like that maybe. So it's, it brings down the price of the property. And I think affordable housing did something like that maybe too when I first started. Mm -hmm. But you had some type of monetary incentive to go through the program but I don't I know it wasn't money in hand but it was money towards whatever you were doing I, I think um go ahead then I've seen some of that I, I think there's where there's part of the mortgage is maybe carried by the the town for example and like five thousand dollars or something and if you stay through like a five-year period in the home and don't try to sell the home I mean, even though you've already got incentive to stay in the home, then there's a debt forgiveness period over a period of time. And also, there are uh, some organizations out there um, that, for example, St. Joe Candler, I, I know when I visited them years ago in Savannah, they, um, they, they'll make a uh, down payment or, or give some form of a, uh, an option for a payment on a mortgage for some of their employees and the employee has to stay with the company and the employee has to stay a certain amount of time same kind of scenario just a different twist so there there's possibilities out there that we haven't tapped yet that you know that may may exist okay so that 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 means that i misunderstood her question <laughs> because i wasn't thinking about um home buying assistance i thought she was talking about classes Would you repeat? When I was talking about it, I was talking about going through classes, that there were some classes back in the day that you had to go through and you got home buyer's assistance. So it was something that was merged together. Okay. Yeah. Um. Now we have home buyers. As, um, I, I'm sorry, I was looking through my mail to see if I saw the name. I don't know, it's South Carolina something I can't remember, but uh, that gives um, home buyer assistance and gives uh, sometimes down payments and things like that, but they have to go through a lender. You know, it's not, it's, it, it, they go through the process of getting the assistance through a lender. And of course they have them for the um, first responders. And I think they call it heat, heat uh, heroes, um, 
But anyway, there is home buyer assistance that I know about, but it's, it, it is through going through a regular lender who have those programs. And then of course, USDA has programs, um, what I consider the very best, but it's actually mortgages at around 2%. Or am I getting too far out of this, the, sub, the topic? <laughs> no, I think you're right on topic. Um, the home buyer assistance, so that if we offered it through the town, would just be in addition to the USDA, USDA loans are something that um, we can offer as one of our tools as well. Um, but I just know that there are a lot of things that people have to go through. And to uh, Ms. Danola's point earlier, um, a lot of people need assistance, like help before they even get to that point. Yes. So um, I was just saying, if we offer assistance for people to, they go through the class, they do everything they need, they need to do. They have additional support as well. It's not, um, I believe Denolis is also right. You know, the town had offered down payment assistance through a different program where we were trying to do the small home series, um, which that never really come to fruition. Um, the small home series that we pretty much had um, in the program built in those small home series was, were like modular homes somehow never uh, got away from us. Either the developer went out of business or the prices doubled. But but there were a program at that point. Um, I'll do some more research um, and get back to you on that. Uh, go ahead. Do we have any other thoughts or concerns? I, I just have one last question. Um, maybe an update on where we are with the contract with the developer. Do we know anything? Yes. Um, yes and no. I, I contact um, the developer and our uh, town manager last week about the uh, about this 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 topic and um it appears that the contract is is completed um, i don't think the developer has signed it yet there there was still um i guess we are still waiting for them to say um we they agree with with our um, uh, criteria of the contract. And that's, it's, like I said, yes and no, at least the contract from our behalf, from, from the town perspective is, has been presented. So when I, when I talked to, um, to the developer, he thought that they were very close to signing. So, um, I'm here at the town today on, uh, for the for another meeting, and I'll put my head in the in the town manager's office before I leave. Mm. Any other thoughts? Okay, if there's nothing else, um, thank you all for a good meeting and uh, please your input about how we can um, invite guests with, with, with specific topics for, for discussion would be appreciated to share your thoughts uh, with Victoria or your, your contacts with Victoria and, um, and we, 
call this meeting uh, adjourned. Thank you all and have a good day.